six o'clock and we'll bring this meeting to order. I want to welcome all of the audience, administration, and the rest of council. With that, Mrs. Burner. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman Chammy. Here. Councilwoman Wright. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Six members present. Okay, with that, the invocation will be done by Chief Trustee. Father Lord, we thank you for this day and the beautiful weather. We pray that you please be in this meeting, Lord, that thy perfect will be done. Please be with our first responders, our troops, and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> with that, I need a motion to accept the special meeting of July 22nd. So, second. Wait. <laughs> we need to make one little change. I'm sorry. We need to make a little change. Okay. We, on that one. I thought it was. It's not that one. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I know what you're talking about. Okay. It's the next one. Yes. Please. Uh, first. And second. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Mm -hmm. Yes. Who first and second? Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Bond. Abstain. I was not in attendance. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Minutes accepted 501. And going next to the regular meeting of August the 19th. That's the one you want to make a change <laughs> on? Yes, please. It's just the way one sentence is worded, a little funny. Do I have to? Oh. You want to change? I do want to change that one. Is sentence. it the without? Yeah. The with? Yeah. Okay. From without to with. Yes, it was, <laughs> was that? You need a motion on a correction. Uh, you can either motion to correct it or you can motion and say with the amendments, whoever, whatever. So move to accept with the amendment. Second. <clears throat> and second with Shammy. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Those minutes are accepted 6-0. And then I need a motion on a special meeting for August the 26th. Councilman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Stain wasn't present. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Those minutes are accepted 501. And with that, does anybody have any communications? We. Oui. I did receive a note from uh, McDonald's that uh, September the 12th at 8.30 in the morning, that's a week from Thursday, they'll be having their ribbon cutting. I assume all of council got a uh, mm -hmm. notice on that. Any other communications? Um, Mr. Cleaner? Mm -hmm. Is this where he could uh, yeah, We could do him now. The uh, gentleman on the diocese, I believe, is here. If you'll come up to the podium, sir. Give us some kind of an idea of what we're looking at. All right. I've got some stuff I'll hand out to you.
put the numbers on the first page so you can be Good. shocked right off the bat. <laughs> that worked too. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Can I say something, Mr. Mayor? Mm. Bill? Can I, say, can I say something? Go ahead, John. Okay. I'll let you up here at the same time. Yes. <laughs> um, the, di the diocese um, committee, you know, Kathy, Peggy, and myself, we did interview several people. We came, Mr. Keener came to us because we advertised for somebody to come. We were very impressed with Mr. Keener, you know, with his presentation to us. Uh, one, another thing is that Mr. Keener has a furniture company that is local, and it's a very fine furniture company that is local. And um, I'm sure his presentation is going to be out of sight. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because it was out of sight for us. Okay. And we saw his brochures. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so we asked him, you know, if he would come mm -hmm. and present to council. Uh, I hope you kind of consider, you know, him as the person to do the dais. You know, we were, we were charged by the, by council to investigate, is it feasible? Now we're bringing it to you. Now it's up to you to say yes, no, maybe so. Okay. Thank you. All right, so if you turn to the number page, you can start kind of seeing some renderings of the ideas that I came up with based on my meeting with the, the committee. Um, they basically, I'm looking at what you kind of have here. It's very similar in shape. A little bit probably a little bit bigger the only thing that's different about the size of what you're seeing on there is that it's actually going to raise everybody up six inches off the floor so you'll be up closer to eye level of people speaking here um, it will be built in a way that it can be disassembled if you ever need to move it um, it will be I, I would call it semi-permanent it's not going to be built in place and then it's here forever but it's built that you can, if you get a new building, if you build a new city building, whatever, it can be moved to that place as well. And, and we'd be happy to help with that as well if you need, if you need that done. Um, the parameters that I was given was you wanted something that had seven spaces, a center section that was raised a little bit, actually a little bit higher for the mayor. Uh, there was a platform on the back that's going to be deep enough that there'd be plenty of room for people to travel behind while people are sitting in the chairs as well as having if you incorporate rolling chairs that you can roll back away from the, the desks themselves. The, plat the table surfaces are large enough to accommodate your iPads, your laptops, papers. Um, and then on the left side, if you're facing that first page, on the left hand side I put a little, a little privacy rail to show if you wanted to do that option or the other side does not have that privacy rail on it, just to show you the different options you can do. Uh, the privacy rails could be incorporate your name plates if you wanted those to be a permanent fixture, or you could slide them in and out rather than having them separate. Um, we could incorporate uh, technology into them with data ports, electricity. It's, I mean, I, this is kind of just a basic concept uh, to get started and have you guys to see what kind of what we can do. Um, I'm suggesting, we talked about wood species, uh, we wanted something durable, something that is uh, economical. I chose white oak. It, I would not suggest doing any type of staining. I would suggest doing a natural finish because wear, you're not going to see it as much. Anything that you go darker, anytime you nick it, chip it, scrape it, whatever, over time it's just going to, it's going to look worse and worse over time. So if you go with something natural, tone it's going to last longer and it's going to be more presentable over a long longer period of time um, the only thing i didn't get much guidance on and i didn't say I, I wrote it in the quote was the flooring behind i don't know if we should do some sort of like a vinyl plank or something that can be laid down when it's in place that is durable that's easy to, you know, if we need to replace it over time because it's going to be the, probably the most wear surface on the whole project because if you have rolling chairs, feet walking on it, it's going to wear over time. If we make it in a way that can be replaced easily, then, you know, you've got that option. Um, 
I mean, I'm open to any questions on that part of the project. Uh, I also was tasked with, if you go back to the two photographs, we asked, was asked for uh, the tables that would go over to the sides. Um, I have an example of a, I'll say actually in Walnut, but we could do that type of what I call like a barrister table that could be flexible for both sides of the, the podium. Um, you could also use those, I was thinking on the way over, you could use them if you wanted to have a more intimate board meeting. You could take those and slide them together and put chairs around them and just have an executive type meeting with more of a conference table would be a 14 foot long conference table that you could have a, a more private meeting at. Uh, the next page is the, the actual lectern podium that would be sitting here that the city members can come speak at. Uh, it would be, <laughs> might be a little bit more vulnerable because there's don't have a big table be around them, but it would be something you could stand at. There could be water, a place for water underneath, but enough ample space that they can put their papers up here and, and still talk to you and present what they need to present without having to have a giant table and something to set all kinds of stuff on, so. Uh. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Keener? Go ahead. Yeah, I was curious, curious of the length of the two arms, and mm -hmm. is that area square to them, or that's an angled area? The length of the two arms. Can you show me what you mean? Yeah, um, the side arms. These here. Oh, those are, uh, I believe they were 88 Just inches roughly, long. Just roughly, yes. So they were seven and a half feet, basically. Okay. And I can get you... I didn't put all the dimensions on it. I can get dimensions on all that if you need to know more specifics. I was going for more the look and the the overall feel just, to it. I was just thinking that if we're not going to put it in here now, we've been talking about that, mm -hmm. and that we could possibly put the two pieces and then the taller one yet behind it for our mayor's court. That's what I was kicking around. Okay. I don't know what the others are thinking. So. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right. What's council's pleasure? Do you want to discuss this further at a work session? Go ahead, Bill. How long will it take you to build this, sir? Actual build time is about 50 to 60 hours with three to four guys in the shop. Lead time, right now I'm working on about a six month lead time. Sometime next year? Yes. <laughs> yeah. For my sanity, yes. Mr. Bridge, have you seen this? No, I have not seen it. <laughs> okay. If I just have the projected dollar amount so I can start working that to our 25 yeah. projections, that'd be good. Yep, I have a dollar amount. Here. Well, dollar amounts is a little over 34 grand. Um, I think it's, if council wishes to consider this, I think this is something that needs to be in the budget. Yeah. I'll have Colleen start plugging it in just so it's in there so you guys know, which is fine because it'll come out of our general I'm going to I'm going to suggest that we kind of hold off on this and making any kind of a formal decision. That's nice. Possibly throwing this into a work session and uh, for a further discussion. Is that amicable with everybody? All right, Gary, thank you very You're much. You're welcome, thank you. Thank you. With that, um, we'll go to the public comment section. There are a limit to five minutes. If necessary, come up to the podium. John Craybacher, 307 North Henry. Um, on your um, agenda today, you're going to have a vote on the um, <laughs> non-manned aerial things, you know, drones, basically. My, my question is, now, I kind of just briefly looked over the ordinance, and my question is, uh, we were having it, going to have a roof put on, but yet they were using a drone to go over our roof to see what it is. I know a lot of construction people, he says that that's what they do now. They don't climb on roofs and 
take measurements or whatever. They either use the global, you know, uh, maps, or they use a drone, you know, to kind of spread, you know, spread out. My question is, I did not see anything in there that that they said that uh, would allow them to even do that. It says that you now over property. Is there a is there a place in there that that the person that the property owner can give permission, you know, to somebody with a drone to look over? I do not believe that there is a section in there, John, that would allow that. Uh, and that might be something that we would want to add in. Mm -hmm. um, I well, think this basically is a, and I will call it generic ordinances. It was brought up about uh, mm -hmm. the drones flying rather close to some of the homes, and that was what I think yeah. keyed this thing off. Yeah, and, and, and I agree because I I heard what Ben was saying. You know, the drone coming over his, his property, and I wouldn't like that either. To tell you the truth, I don't even like it at the garden. But however, ten acres, you know, they, they occasionally, you know, we get one or two over. But you know, and I was thinking of, about that when I was you know about construction people or having permission, you know, that they that they can do. Go ahead. Ben. Number three, under prohibited uses, says no person shall operate an unmanned aircraft system within the city limits over private property without written consent of the homeowner. So I think that would cover it. Okay. I think, you know, if, some, if somebody's doing construction on your house and you mm -hmm. give them permission to do a quote and that's what they use to do the quote. So they might have a waiver. Your property. So they might have a waiver then? Or yeah, it just, okay. I mean, it just says that they need to have written permission. Written consent of the homeowner. Okay, I was. <laughs> I think that would cover it. Yeah. It does. But. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um. <laughs> Go ahead, Ken. Yeah, on number two, um, it says person means an individual operating unmanned aircraft system for recreational use and not commercial use. So commercial use is is perfectly fine. Any mm -hmm. like. Take a picture of your house, or check your roof, or mm -hmm. anything that's done commercially, you know, to make profit off of. Okay. I guess is the mean. All right, I just want to make that clear. Yeah, it, I think it is. So. Okay. Yeah, it's a Thank good point. You. Yep. Any further? Anyone else? Go ahead, Mr. Lowry. I just had a couple things I wanted to go over. Um, the, the ordinance you guys are going over as far as drones, what's the purpose behind it, if you don't mind me asking? You're looking right at me. Huh? Well, <laughs> anyone. Well, I know that, it, that you two were kind of the, the power behind it. So, And the reason I'm asking this is the FAA does this. This is what the FFA is for. Um, if I remember right, Section 107 of FFA's regulations, it, it puts all this in what you guys are speaking of. Right. So I, I don't understand the, redu the redundancy behind it. Um, if it's already in place by an organization or government regulate regulator, that, that that's what they do. I mean, that's what they're there for. So I mean, they've got the rules as far as everything that you guys are all concerned with. So I didn't understand dipping into it twice when it's already a rule or law in place. Um, it basically spending tax dollars to have Jake work something up that's already on the books as a law. I just didn't understand that. So um, to the last council meeting, a council, there was discussion about whether we should or should not go into an executive session for applicants for the empty council seat. I know there was concerns about people that would rather do it in private and things of that nature. Uh, as you all know, anybody that's ran for council, that is a, you know, it's a public seat. It's a very public seat. And one of the things that we a lot of times do is when we run for council, is they do an, a, um, a meet the candidates night, which is pretty much what you guys did um, with those people who applied. You asked them questions, similar things that what we would get during a meet the meet the candidates night. So it's that that's not out of the norm to be asked questions about why you would be qualified to do such a, a job as you know a council seat. Uh, so I, I, you know, it's always been, as far as I know, done in an open session, and it's that's just the way it should be done because. 
if there's people here that want to see who may be in that council seat, they would maybe want to learn something about a future council member that's going to be representing them. I think they have every right to hear that. Um, another uh, point is the, the meeting you guys went into, and I, I'm sure you guys heard about it, that uh, I shot an email to Randy and Jake with concerns about the the legal, the legal aspects of going into that meeting. It wasn't held in a legal manner for two reasons. It wasn't on the agenda. So therefore, council should have broke rules of council to add that to the meet, to the agenda and then made a motion to go into the meeting for said reason, which was never stated at all when the motion was made. So therefore, that meeting was held, I'm not going to say illegally, but it was not properly formatted uh, to do so. So I just want to point that out. Um, you know, it's it's not always comfortable getting questions about why you want a particular job, but it's a very public job and a public seat. And I think, you know, people have the right to hear it if you're going to be representing those citizens. So I just want to make sure you guys are aware that a couple steps were missed when you guys went into executive session. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Pat Craybacher, 307 North Henry Street, New Carlisle, Ohio, 45344. I just have two comments. One is a feel-good comment. I just want you to know that we appreciate the support of the city at the community garden. Um, things are going really well this year. We have lots of new gardeners, lots of new things growing. In fact, John picked today our, I think, our very first cantaloupe, about this big. <laughs> And uh, we've had drought for two months. We've June and um, pretty much August going into September has been a drought. So it's a lot of watering. Um, just want you to know John is out there virtually four to six hours every day. And then we do the farmer's market. And that's another six hours on Saturday. So we are raising a lot of funds to support ourselves. I am concerned. John is concerned, too. But I haven't talked about him, talked to this on this topic with him about it. But you know, we're concerned about the future, and we would love for someone from the community to step forward who has an interest in food security and, um, you know, eventually taking over. We also want to have a discussion with the school board because it's their property, and you guys don't own it, but it affects, you know, the community around the property. So we are excited that we have uh, new things growing, and the cantaloupe, if you would know, grew itself from seed. <laughs> in two different places in the garden. And we've got eight or nine on this one vine in a box. And then this other one um, is growing um, in another box. So, you know, food has a way of taking care of you if you take care of the soil. And I think over the last uh, five years or so, um, with Kathy's help as treasurer, but we have really been helping improve that property there around the old um, Westlake Elementary School. And it really, could be a learning center for the schools. That's going to be my message to them again. So that's my feel-good comment. I do have one comment about the appointment on the, the empty council seat. I believe that this council desperately needs new voices, um, younger people, and um, people who are team players, who can sit at a table with discourse and maybe not agree with what's being said, but at least have the respect to listen to uh, other opinions, and that's the only way you ever learn as an individual, too. So that's my hope for you guys that on this council uh, position that it will be someone who is really suited to be on council and work with each one of you. Thanks. Thank you, Pat. Mr. Go ahead, Mr. Vaughn. Could I address this? Go ahead. Effort? Mrs. Craybacher, <clears throat> real quick, just uh, off the top of my head, I was just wondering, have you guys talked to the FFA at Tecumseh about the community garden? Yeah. No, yes, okay. they turned us down every And they turn it down. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Northwestern sends North some volunteers out. They send volunteers out. Northwestern does. Yeah. Thanks. Mm. So that's, it's sad. That's, it's sad. Yeah, <laughs> that is. Hmm. Mm. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? If not, we'll move on. Mrs. Burner, Ordinance 2024-46. We gotta do city manager report first. Yeah. We skipped over the city manager report. You want? To, I'm sorry. I, 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 I worked hard to prepare my report, sir. It's <laughs> <laughs> kidding. Look like three. Well, 
Can I start? Is that good? Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, and of course, members of the public. City manager report dated September 3rd, 2024. Normally, at the first meeting of the year, we have a two-week mayor's court uh, property exterior maintenance report. We're actually going to go back to monthly on those. So um, if, you're, if we're missing that for this particular uh, meeting, that is why. Uh, we're going to give council packets out a little bit earlier to council. So with that and how that cycle works out with our mayor's court, it's just not feasible to do every two weeks for that. So that report is going to go to monthly. So I just wanted to update anyone on that, just in case they're expecting that in this particular report. So again, those will resume on September 16th, 2024. Under informational items, I think this is a really good idea. Um, so I already talked to Jake about this, our law director. And it would just take us, uh, where council, really just amend rules of council. And that is taking your ordinances from a two-read cycle to a three-read cycle. And that will give it time, one, to set a little bit longer, two week, two extra weeks on the agenda before it's voted on, but to also give council an extra two weeks to actually digest the material. Some of these ordinances, as we grow, as a city grows, are getting a little bit more complicated. Um, and that's going to, that trend is going, conti going to continue. So I am not able to make that uh, choice on my own since it is in the rules of council. But I would like to ask council to discuss, again, changing the ordinance reads from two to three. Uh, and that would require some discussion and uh, a change of the rules of council for you guys as well. Any comments? You can always suspend that by doing emergency ordinance, so that can still be an option. So if we have something pressing, we can deal, still pass that by emergency ordinance. <clears throat> Go ahead, Ken. I just have a question. If we're moving it to three weeks, does that mean right now we do them every two weeks? So mm -hmm. no, three reads. Three reads. Three. Reads. So it'd be introduced. So if it introduced Which today, is what I thought, but I thought you said move, weeks. Yeah, be so voted on at the first meeting in October. And this is just stemming from you know council just moves at a fast pace, mm -hmm. and this will just slow it down a little bit. Any other comment? Go ahead, Bill. I think uh, even though we have some growth coming with the two uh, developments and there'll be more things that we need to address, I think the two reads are sufficient for now and three reads would be basically six weeks from something was introduced till we voted on it. it uh, I just think it would hold a lot of things up, especially with developments and stuff that we have to do. So myself, I would not be interested in going to uh, three reads. I'd, for now, I'd like to stick with the two and then maybe look at it again next year or something and see how things are progressing or developing in the, in the city. <clears throat> You're done. Yes. Go ahead, Mr. Vaughn. Um, one thing, I, I kind of agree with Mr. Lindsay, but one thing I'd like to kind of see is with this change in the meeting packets coming out earlier, that may help with just doing the two reads because we have more time to digest it before it's read the first time, too. So I think um, I would be up, keep this on our radar as something to possibly do, but maybe right now wait and see how with getting our packets earlier if that doesn't help with some of that that rushed feel that we tend to feel sometimes so anyone else my personal feeling is that perhaps by going to three readings it would give the citizens a little bit more input on the fact of what we have to sit here and go over and pass. That was my first thought. You know, in the past, I don't think we've had much citizen input. Uh, and I'll go back to the chicken ordinance for one. And again, other than what Mr. Kraybacher has spoken about the uh, drone ordinance that's all we basically heard we heard very little of anything in regards to the marijuana ordinance i i personally would i think i'd like to see it go to three but i'm willing to wait um
Do we need a motion to either accept or reject this for this for now? Mm -hmm. I heard Vice Mayor motion to accept three reads. She made the motion to accept. I did not hear a second. I, did, I didn't hear a second. Was there a second? I'll make a second just to get it on the floor. Okay. <clears throat> Good to call it. Councilman Bond? No. Councilman Shammy? No. Councilwoman Wright? No. Councilman Lindsay? No. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? And I'll have to vote yes to go down. No, I failed. <clears throat> Two to four. All right, back to you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you. And 2024 Town Hall moved from to November 18th to December 2nd. So I called Mr. Cook because I was unaware that we set a <coughs> hard date for the Town Hall for 2024. Then I looked at my calendar and I saw that I had one noted for November 18th. So I'm not sure if we officially set the November 18th date, uh, date for Town Hall. Um, ideally, um, if we could switch it or have a motion to go to December 2nd, because that's when we plan to have council vote on your operating budget. And it'd be great to have the citizen uh, input that we have and attendance we have when we have town hall on the day that we actually vote the ordinance in for 2025 operating. So again, like the three read, that'll be totally council's discussion, um, but a decision. So if you guys would like to change that date right now, I do have it on November 18th. If you'd like to change it to the, to December 2nd, I, we will require a motion for that. What's well, council's pleasure? I think. Uh, go, ahead. Oh. go ahead. We we set this date. I don't know. It almost seems like forever ago, but it's been a while. Uh, for it, uh, I have five thirty on my calendar, but that may not be right. Maybe six. Yep, for the eighteenth, sir. Sorry to interrupt. For the eighteenth, November eighteenth, okay. yes. Uh, and all council agreed to it at that time, so I kind of think maybe we should just leave it there. And then uh, on the first or December second, do the uh, let's see, do the CIP or the budget. I mean, Mr. Vaughn, I'm fine with moving. I had it on the 18th also at 5:30, sure. but. Um, I mean, I'm fine with moving it to the second. It's the first meeting of the month, so generally it's a little lighter uh, mm -hmm. agenda anyway. So, I mean, I'm fine with moving it. It just whatever everybody else wants to do. It, either way is fine with me. Go ahead. Consistent comment. Look at my calendar. Uh, Thanksgiving is the latest it can be this year. It's on November 28th, mm -hmm. and if you move it to December 2nd, then then you've got a compressed holiday season and I'll tell you what things after Thanksgiving get crazy so mm -hmm. my thought is you'd be better off to leave it the 18th if you really want citizen participation so it's council's pleasure to leave it on the 18th okay uh, 2025 capital improvement plan budget timeline the first read will be on November 18th Action will be on 12-2. Work session dates with City Council will be in between October 7th and November 11th. Uh, once we have, once we do the administrative review on that uh, budget, we'll uh, set some work session dates up with City Council. That can be a combination of uh, doing a little bit during a regular session and then picking it back up at the work session that following Monday. However, Council wants to tackle that, we'll be prepared for you to do so. Um, no knock registry update. Um, the only thing we're waiting on is we ordered some uh, vinyl stickers so people can put on their front door that says stop per ordinance 2024 dash, I think it was 34. Uh, this house is on the do not knock registry. That is the last component we're doing. Once we get those in, that, that is going to go live. Um, we're bound by delivery dates. Uh, it was supposed to be here Friday, but it didn't get pushed back about another week, week and a half. So again, we're doing a no-knock registry. It's going to allow the citizens to go online to our website to see what current door-to-door uh, -door <coughs> salesman has an active uh, license. If they don't have an active license, a way to report that to the non-emergency number. Once you sign up for that no-knock registry, we're also going to give you a little sticker to put on your front window that says, please do not knock. So we're excited to get that program up and rolling. Um, just one of those things that council wants us to look at. We got a lot of positive feedback for that no-knock registry, so I think it's going to be a very, very uh, awesome program. 
Um, ballot proofs for both the chickens and charter amendments have been sent to us. Um, I looked over both of them. I didn't have any changes. Jake, I'm sure you didn't have any changes. I suggested did. some minor changes, but nothing significant. Just type uh, minor typos and stuff like that. Is that for the um, Just charter the amendments? charter amendments. So we got those late Friday, uh, literally probably like 3, 30, 4 o'clock. We had to have the changes back by uh, first thing this morning. So thank you, Jake, for working on that. We appreciate no. that over the weekend. Um, city union negotiations, those will begin in late September. So as soon as that negotiation is done, we will bring that uh, contract for council to <coughs> review. Uh, every couple of years, we do have to have that union negotiation that we set new operating guidelines for our union employees. 2023 audit, it is in review phase with the state of Ohio. Um, council members should be getting an email from the uh, company who did our audit requesting a post audit conference. I highly recommend council does that. This is probably one of the better audits we have. Ms. Harris has done a phenomenal job over the years of getting our audits clean. And this year we are, we do have a clean audit. We do have some things on a management letter that we have to address, but that is an internal document. It does not go out to the public. It's just basically here, you do this a little bit better next time. But we need to commend our finance director. Every year our audits get better and better and better. And that really impacts our bond rating, impacts a lot of stuff. So Ms. Harris um, has done a fantastic job. But again, as soon as that is out of review with the state level, I'm sure Perry and Associates will be getting a hold of each council member to see if you guys want to have that post audit conference. Monroe Meadows TIF update schedule. This was in the last meeting as well, but I wanted to put it back in. Uh, put it back in. So the uh, Monroe Meadows TIF ordinance, it, it is a third, re, a, th a three read cycle that is uh, prescribed by state of Ohio. So um, introduction of first read will be September 16th. Second reading will be October 7th. The third reading and action will be October 21st. And that actually has a 30 day waiting period for that to be effective per state statute. So the uh, legislation will be effective November 20th. Disaster recovery response plan, council has that in their review. Uh, we will need to uh, review that at a work session here soon and then put some uh, resolution in place to adopt it. Um, doing a disaster recovery plan has a ripple effect on our business continuation plan. So council passed, uh, recently passed that back in 2022. So we'll have to amend that again through council. So once that is finalized, there'll be another resolution amending that other one just to make our business con continuation plan current. The difference between the two really is a disaster recovery. Fire chief is going to take over. Um, but that business con continuation is really focuses on me, myself, and our finance director about how, I'm sorry, me, our Howie, and our finance director about how we're going to continue operating that, operating the city. We have plans to work remotely should we need to. We each have pucks that we uh, have from Verizon to get on the internet should the internet be down. So the state of Ohio makes us have that in place so the city can still operate. So again, since you guys last approved that 2022 and the disaster recovery triggered some amendments to that, you guys have to approve, or approve that again. Once that's done, I plan to give it out, similar to how we did the disaster recovery plan, let you guys sit on it for a few weeks, read it, and then come back and visit it when you guys have time to go through it. Upcoming legislation, the reserves at Honey Creek uh, TIF uh, legislation round two, that is coming soon. I still don't have a hard date for that, but as soon as I do, I'll pass it along to council. And again, upcoming legislation would be that business continuation plan and also collecting bargaining unit contract. Uh, that is all I have for the city manager report. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Any questions from council? <coughs> If none, I guess Mr. Verner will go to the ordinance that I tried to help. <clears throat> All right, our first one is Ordinance 2024-46. This was introduced on August 19th. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance amending Section 1060.99 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle regarding garbage and rubbish collection and disposal. So it was the first. Any comments? I just Go want to ahead, speak Kathy. briefly about this. This is really just a change in one sentence. There was a hundred dollar fee per day of each offense or per offense each day. Either way, it read very poorly, and I just wanted to make sure that was cleaned up a little bit and it was understandable by all. It also brings the price down a little lower on the first offense, which means if you didn't have the money to pay your trash, then you might have time to get that done before the big bills keep kicking in. 
anything further? If not. Mm -hmm. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? No. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chammy? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. That passes five to one. I've got ordinance 2024-47. This was introduced on August 19th, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance amending chapter 648 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle to address unmanned aircraft systems. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. <coughs> got it. And I did bring this, I'm sorry, I did bring the ordinance up. Um, it's just a thing that when I started reading about it and looking into it because we had an issue and um, I was surprised at the number of things people can do terribly wrong to what they what I assumed was a toy and it's not much of a toy there there's very much that can go wrong and this addresses some of those things the FFA does have lots of good rules and they maybe aren't necessarily followed so what this mostly says is that if you want to ride or play in somebody's backyard that you need to get permission from that person and you know there's nothing I don't think see anything wrong with getting permission and even the FFA suggests you get permission first so that's basically what this is about protect people's rights to privacy anything further <clears throat> Mrs. Burner Vice Mayor Eggleston yes Mayor Cook no Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. That passes 5 to 1. I've got Ordinance 2024 48. This was also introduced on August 19th. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance amending Chapter 248 of the codified ordinances of the City of New Carlisle regarding city policy. So moved. Second. Was Mr. Shammy the person on that? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, explanation of this ordinance. This will amend Chapter 248 of this codified ordinance of the City of New Carlisle. That chapter houses a lot of our city policies, and this is a one that we do want to codify, and it's our incentive pay policy. So our water and wastewater employees, uh, the state of Ohio requires them to have certain level of licensures to run each plant. Um, so we are late on this trend, but we wanted to uh, actually incentivize those people when they get those uh, required licenses to give them a little more on the hour and then to incentivize them to retain that knowledge here in the city of New Carlisle. So we entered into an MOU with the union uh, back early, early, earlier in the year. Uh, I got that MOU signed back and it triggered us to actually codify it now that we know the union is on board. And that is what is in front of council tonight, just simply taking that incentive say policy and putting it in our actual codified ordinances. Any further? Mr. Burner. All right. Councilman Chammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. That passes 6 0. <clears throat> um, the next one is read only. Ordinance 2024 20, 49. An ordinance approving the solid waste management plan for the Clark County Solid Waste Management District. Uh, would you like me to go ahead and read other business? Go ahead. Additional city business. There will be an intergovernmental meeting on September 30th at THS at 6 p.m. Um, and then open for discussion on city related business. Continued with the Clerk discussion and acting clerk of council discussion and continuation of city council vacant seat appointment. Okay, I had talked with Mr. Bridge in regards to the possibility of bringing on board a, an assistant clerk. That way, in case our present clerk would. Uh, not be available for a meeting we would have somebody to step in and also the fact that in case the clerk would happen to resign we would have someone that was trained in the wings and could step in 
I don't know whether counts, what council's thoughts are on that situation, but I think we had a, a very good crop of applicants for the clerk's position. I'll, I'll say um, we did have some really great applicants, that's true. And maybe it's not a bad idea, but I think the pay schedule didn't work. I know when we talked to Emily about this before, that it was, was not enough for her to share. So if we did want to do something like that, we'd almost have to set aside X amount of dollars to train them and then a separate X amount of dollars for them to do that job. I see nothing wrong with having a substitute. That's just my opinion. Do you want to get in this parade? Uh, it's also up to council. All we need to do is just change your code. Well, we had pay. talked about the fact of the possibility of making, uh, how do you want to say this, an appropriation in yeah. order to pick up that uh, balance. And we'd have to probably do this. The council wages are, are tight. We know every year how much council is going to have. We know there's seven people. We get X amount of dollars. So it's pretty easy to put the wages in there. So when you bring someone on and you double stack that, um, we will definitely have to do a supplemental, uh, supplemental to get some more council wages in there. So um, should we do that supplemental, it'll be a great time to also just piggyback off of it and add more funds for that backup clerk to council. Emily, please speak over me because it really has between you and council. I think the issue is is right now Emily gets, was it 400 a month, right? So what is that dollar amount you guys want to give a backup who comes and comes for one meeting? Do they just sit here and take notes and then em emails those to Emily or, or Chris and then she continues with the minutes? Or does that one person who sat at that meeting do the minutes as well? And if that one person who sat does the minutes, then it's pretty easy. She gets 200 bucks because it's $200 a meeting for uh, all, it, was what it comes down to. So really, you guys just have to figure out what mechanism, how you want to split that, and when does that kick in? And then what are the duties is for Emily or the person not here? <coughs> are they just a... Uh, business as usual or are they going to do the minutes sometimes it's hard to do the minutes if you're not sitting at that meeting but then we also video it as well so long story short we can do whatever we just have to amend your wages and your council line item and then get with a job description and the uh, uh, that would work for both parties mr. Rodewald yes please <laughs> come on <laughs> Instead of bringing on, you need my name. No. Instead of bringing on a a, a, a fill-in, um, why don't you just look to increase the position's pay to entice them to not want to leave? Because um, four hundred dollars for council, that's good. I mean, we don't do don't do a lot. Um, let's be honest. Um, but the hours Emily has put in doing everything, breaking down the meetings, putting in the notes, putting in the paper for all the ads. Um, you know, like Randy said, it's $200 a meeting, but we both know, we all know that her responsibilities and duties and time she puts in is far beyond the meeting. She puts in an extended amount of hours. So even if you do decide to bring on a part-timer, I think you really need to look at increasing um, the clerk of council's uh, salary so to speak um, just because of her workload and going forward um, point well taken so any further comment on this or do we want to address it later on go ahead bill one question i would have i guess would be to the clerk if i may go ahead uh, would the clerk, present or future, want to do the minutes if they missed a meeting, or would you want the secondary or the assistant clerk do the minutes? Which would be easier on you? Yeah, I don't, well, I don't have any experience in this. I prefer to do them. Even, Even if, if I missed a meeting, I would go back and watch it. Okay. Um, or <clears throat> if I just had, because um, my only experience is having Randy's 
you know, the notes that he takes and if anything was voted on. Um, and I think that if I had a backup, I still would probably prefer to do them. Just, I don't know. So, so you would want to continue doing them to make a consistency in the minutes from meeting to meeting. Yes. The same person. Yes, and so you that way I knew what's going style. on, and I don't know. So that yeah, I was just always still, even though I wasn't present at a meeting, I want would want to know what's going on and what to expect at the next. Okay. <clears throat> then I would think, based on our conversation with the clerk, that. Whoever the clerk is, their responsibility would be to do the minutes, whether they're here or not. And the backup, the assistant clerk, would would take the minutes, or you know, take notes of the meeting, hand it off to the clerk. And in Mrs. Burner's case, she would watch the video anyways, in case something was missed. And then the counts and stuff, like she said, she would get from the city manager. I think that would probably work best going forward. But I'd also like to know what the new clerk, what her opinion is on it, even though she hasn't, she's still in training, if that would be her wish also. I think that it makes sense. I mean, like Emily said, you can still stay in the loop of what's going on and keep your notes the same. Okay. So, so based on the two people that taking care of our minutes and stuff right now and will be in the future, I, I think uh, the uh, clerk should be the one doing the, the uh, minutes, whether they were present at the meeting or not, because they have other m menus or venues to, to see what was said at the meeting, along with the notes of the assistant. I think the idea behind it was the fact that in the event that we would have a clerk that would resign, then we would have a backup that could step in that had been trained at that point. That was the consensus of the opinion. And since we had, I guess the word is the capable people, go ahead, Pat. I think nobody can read the future, and Emily's worked incredibly hard. I can tell that from just sitting in the audience over the years, but nobody can read the future, and if something would happen unexpected, like a car accident or maybe even an extended family vacation somewhere, I mean, things may just happen, or, or somebody's ill, or a family member's ill, and, and she needs to take care of them. I mean, I just think you need to have it flexible so that, depending on the situation, the best decision can be made for, you know, carrying on the business of council. So maybe you have both of those options in there that the, the, the clerk could decide to, you know, do the minutes as long as they can be done in time for the next meeting when they're needed. Or you could have the backup person do it, depending on, again, the circumstances. So I think that would be something for, um, maybe the clerk to decide as he or she was able, but you can't have it just cast in concrete, I don't think. You have to have some flexibility. Mr. Bond. It, so what it sounds like to me, maybe what we should do is, <clears throat> being that we're going into budgeting season here, maybe earmark some money for a kind of part-time kind of a per position that would only pay um, and probably less than normal because they wouldn't be doing all the extra work after the fact, but have that money earmarked and then down the road choose a person that would be willing to do that in a, you know, kind of a late kind of call, on call type of a thing um, to be able to fill that. Um, so it might be good to maybe kind of keep this discussion going as we go into the budget season and, and kind of think through that a little bit. Maybe. Go ahead, Bill. And the, and the assistant clerk, uh, I'm sure that the, the clerk, I know Emily would and does, she's training the new clerk now, and I'm sure that when we do get an assistant clerk, that the new clerk 
will train her because there's ways, things that she would want done, certain ways she would want things done. And then she could overview, overlook the, the assistant clerk as far as the minutes and kind of verify until the assistant gets up to speed and stuff. And, and to address Mrs. Krabacher's comment, uh, the, uh, we never know when something could happen. Uh, and it would be awesome if you could take an extended vacation for a month or two. I'm planning one next year. Uh, and may not come back if I get out of the country. Uh, no applause? <laughs> the, uh, but you won't like who I sell my house to, John. <laughs> so, I mean, it, I, I think uh, anything's possible as far as accidents and, and things like that. But I think the clerk present and future would, would train the, the assistant clerk the way that things would be done. All right, so it seems to be the general consensus we put this off until the budget situation at that point. Okay. Do we want to go into, well, I know we want to go into executive session to discuss property, and I believe we may also, in that executive session, discuss, discuss the possibility of the city council vacancy. Do I have a motion to go into executive session? Second. You need to state a reason. Or reasons. I just did. We move to go into executive session to consider the appointment and appointment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, promotion, or compensation of a public employee or official, and to consider the purchase of property. Okay. And who was the second? Seconded. Seconded. Okay. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Motion passes. Six zero. With that, we'll go into executive session. <coughs> Be a short five minute break here. I move to go back into regular session. Second. Need a motion. I just did. Oh. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Shammy to go back into regular session. Lindsay Shammy, regular session at 729. I was trying to kill every time I try it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. That passes 6 0. Can we tell everybody to come in? Please. Yes, please. <clears throat> I don't know what I'm going to do without you. What? She's, She's going to do fine. <laughs> what is she, chop liver over here? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She'll be fine. Yeah. first day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, Question you, is you, if she comes back for the second day. Yeah, that would be the trick. <laughs> No do pressure, you've got <laughs> some big shoes to fill. No, yeah. they're out no there. pressure. She's you'll do, right you'll do fine. She doesn't have to be fine. Yeah. <laughs> you see her trying to run? <laughs> I told her, usually we don't have to mess with the camera. Um, oh, there she goes. I didn't see her. That's what the slide traps are all. All right, we're back uh, in the regular session. Do I hear a motion to open up a nomination? Mr. Mayor, move to open up nomination. Second. Lindsay Shammy, open nominations. All right. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Pass the six here. All right. Do I have a motion for the first nomination, please? Kathy. I would like to nominate Carrie Ann Grove. 
Do I have to give a reason or just say it? Okay. okay. And was there a second to that? Yeah. All right, Mr. Shammy. Uh, all right. I, and Shammy. Do I hear any other nominations? Go ahead. I'd like to nominate um, David Peters. David Peters, is that what you said? I have a motion. Do I have a second on Mr. Peters? Second. Second by Mr. Bond. Okay. I'm going to make a motion to uh, nominate uh, Mr. Rodewald. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Peg. Mr. Mayor, I move to close the nominations. I have a motion Sorry. to close the nominations. <clears throat> Shammy and Lindsay? What? Lindsay Shammy. All right. Councilwoman Wright. For who? We're closing oh. nominations. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. I'm really smart. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shaney? Yes. Motion to close nominations accepted 6 0. All right. You have three applicants or three nominations. Yep. So we're going to start with Carrie Ann Grow. The first was Wright, the second was Shammy. So I will start with Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? No. Mayor Cook? No. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Your vote is four to two. Well, looks like Carrie Ann Grow is your next. So. And Mr. Mayor, go ahead. May I suggest that your clerk swears her in as new councilman? Be fine. Go ahead. Yeah. I just want to make sure I'm spelling your name right. It's K A R I A N N E. No. no. Okay. <laughs> it is K A R I A N E. All right. I'm glad I asked. You can come up front here and I'll. Oh, excuse me. I know you heard that. All right. Um, so I will go slow and you just repeat what I say. Okay. okay. I, Carrie Ann Grow. I, Carrie Ann Grow, do hereby solemnly swear, do hereby solemnly swear, or affirm, or affirm, that I shall support, that I shall support, the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution and laws of the State of Ohio, the Constitution and laws of the State of Ohio, and all local ordinances, and all local ordinances, and the Charter of the City of New Carlisle, Ohio. In the Charter of the City of New Carlisle, Ohio. I will faithfully. I will faithfully. Honestly. Honestly. And impartially discharge. And impartially discharge. The duties of Member of Council. The duties of Member of Council. For the City of New Carlisle, Ohio. For the City of New Carlisle, Ohio. For the term ending December 31st, 2027. For the term ending December 31st, 2027 to which I have been appointed <clears throat> to which I have been appointed
Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, I would like to congratulate Carrie Ann as the newest member of City Council. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. With that, is there any other business to come before council? Move to adjourn. Second. Have a motion and a second for adjournment. All right. Second was Jamie. Councilwoman yes. Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Grow. Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shannon? Yes. We are adjourned.